Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and call to order the June 28th meeting of the Metro Transit District Board of Directors. Can we have our safety debrief? Good morning. Morning. Uh, so, Gregor Strucker, Safety Security Risk Director. Uh, for those of you um, who are unfamiliar with the building, want to go over some safety uh, uh, items. Um, so we can get it. First, in the event of an emergency or an evacuation uh, type situation, uh, there's two routes for evacuation. The main one is right behind you. Uh, the door, uh, if you go through that door, there's a little hallway. And you exit out the parking lot on the back side. And the evacuation area is right by the street in that area. The second um, route of evacuation, if this area is blocked, is out of that door right behind. And then down the stairs. Again, in the event of evacuation, you do not want to take the elevator. So make sure you take the stairs out the front entrance to the parking lot. And the back seat and the uh, assembly area is right there. There's a couple signs out there pointing to where those evacuation areas are. Um, in the event of an emergency, um, any, can everyone who is CPR certified raise their hand? <coughs> Got a few people. Um, in, and we do have AEDs that are available downstairs in the, in the uh, front of the building. Uh, those AEDs are automatic uh, defibrillators. So if um, someone needs to be used, if one of the machines needs to be used, all you need to do is turn them on, and the device will tell you all the steps you need to do in order to try to resuscitate or use the device uh, to bring the person back. Um, in the event of a active shooter situation, first thing to do is to get out of the building um, as quickly and away from the direction of the shooter. Uh, if you are unable to do that, depending on the situation, second thing to do is to try to hide yourself um, anywhere you can hide. And if you cannot hide, the last thing to do is to fight. Um, in the event of an earthquake, uh, make sure to get underneath your desk is the first thing. If you're by a desk, um, stay clear of the window. So you guys are in the window, make sure you get away from the window. Um, and, um, and of course, in this area, um, if you Go near the walls. I mean, aware of the walls is a better area in case of the building collapse. Um, and of course, uh, in the event of an earthquake, do not use uh, the elevator to evacuate the building after the earthquake. And um, as soon as the earthquake has, uh, has stopped, wait until the earthquake has stopped, then evacuate the building. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Can we have a roll call, please? Director Brown here. Director Downing here. Director Dutra, Director Commentary Johnson is absent today. Uh, Director Koenig? Here. Director Lynn? Here. Director McPherson? Here. Director Newsom? Present. Director Pagler? Here. Director Kiros Carter? Director Rockpin? Here. Ex officio Director Northcutt? Ex officio Director Riskin? Here. And we have quorum. Thank you. And I believe we're expecting Director Heroes Carter to join us online yes, at watching. some point, so we will keep an eye on that. Um, we'll move on to item four, announcements. Today's meeting is being broadcast by Community Television of Santa Cruz County. Language Line Services is providing Spanish interpretation, which will be available during oral communications and for any other agenda item for which these services are needed. And we have Hector Guzman with us today. Hi, good morning. Good morning, board. Uh, my name is Hector, and I'm here to provide Spanish interpretation for any uh, item on the agenda. Please let the board know if um, anybody needs any assistance. Hola, mi nombre es Hector. Uh, yo estoy aquí para proveer servicios de interpretación en cualquier cosa de la agenda hoy. Por favor, déjale a la mesa directiva saber si necesitan alguna asistencia. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on now to board of directors' comments. Are there any comments from the board this morning? Yes, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to invite the public, especially those that live in Aptos, to participate in the Aptos Building Crawl on August 3rd, the morning of August 3rd. It's uh, an event that's hosted by the Seacliff Improvement Association, and you might remember that we did receive a grant from America Walks uh, to put on this event. And the goal of this is to Get a couple things to give pedestrians the tools that they need to advocate for safer routes. Um, Aptos Village is very walkable once you get there. Uh, walking into it is not. 
So we're going to be giving people the tool of six different agencies there, uh, including this one to give people information about how to stay safe when they're pedestrians and also to teach uh, participants to advocate for themselves and to get drivers to respect those of us who are walking. Thank you. Any mm -hmm. comments? Seeing none, we will move on to oral and written communication to the board of directors. I see we have one email dated 6-19-24 from Hayden Miller. My understanding is that no additional communications were received. Correct. So we will now uh, open it up for verbal communications to the board. Uh, if you have any comments, please uh, step up to the podium. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, my name is Phil Gomez. I'm the president of the Woodside Terrace Homeowners Association in Aptos. I'll just jump into it. Since December of 2023, our residential street is being used as a shortcut for Metro bus drivers. The Santa Cruz Metro Transit District buses begin hitting our neighborhood streets around 6.30 a.m. and continue up to 11.30 p.m. It had been hourly, but, uh, but as of late, they are often running at one for a half hour and sometimes within 15 minutes of each other. There is no denying that these 30-ton empty buses regularly exceed the speed limit down Willow Brook. We believe SCMTD should have been transparent in their decision to take over a residential street and consider other alternatives including working with Carrillo College to provide a wider space for bus drivers to make a turnaround. It would also seem that using lower perimeter road by Cessna House to make a turnaround as an option or utilizing the Carrillo parking area as a turnaround. SCMTD Director of Planning and Development John Ergo sent the following email in response to a concern from a homeowner in our neighborhood. We tested many variations and met with Carrillo administrators but Willowbrook was the only public right of way that worked for the bus geometry. And the Metro board may be patting their backs for what they think is a problem solved, but we have to live with these 30 ton buses for 16 hours a day and night. And that's not a service, it's a disservice to this community. Thank you. Thank you. You just have comments to the board this morning. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, board members and staff. Thank you for having me. My name is Carol Roberts, and I live at 2865 Wimbledon Drive. My house borders both Wimbledon and Willowbrook Drive. I'm here to discuss the buses, but Route 73, that is currently running 27 buses per day, 189 per week, from 6.30 a.m. to 11.30 p.m., seven days a week on Willowbrook Lane. I received an email from John Ergo that mentioned he understands that the buses are out of place on Willowbrook Lane. I would certainly agree with him, not only out of place, more like 189 whales beached in a desert. I attended a community event recently, and the hot topic were the buses. How many, how loud, and going too fast on our lovely lane. The lack of transparency for the Santa Cruz Metro District is concerning and astounding. Please, in future, when making decisions concerning an entire neighborhood, I suggest that you invite a member of that neighborhood to participate in discussions concerning the issues that affect them. I urge this board to end this as soon as is possible. Um, I would like to read uh, two emails that I received, short parts. One from Don Ergo, and I quote, yes, we are planning on an alternate route for the fall. I can't absolutely guarantee it, but it will most likely be in place. We are also working on a possible detour to implement before then. Either way, I believe the situation will be temporary, unquote, John Ergo. Also, I quote, yes, I believe we are on track to be completely off by September, unquote, Brandon Freeman. I would like to also say to you that you need to remember that we as well are your stakeholders, not just your riders. We are your, we own our homes and our condos and uh, often people rent and we pay taxes and we vote. Thank you. Thank you. 
additional comments? Hi, welcome. Hi, good morning. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I wish I had the frequency that Willowbrook does. I live on Walnut and I have to walk to Laurel or um, Bay to get to the bus, which is not a problem, but I mean, yeah, just like be aware of your privilege in having a frequent bus service by your house. Um, I have I have some comments about um, new service changes that came June 20th. Um, on June 20th, the transit app was not updated. So I don't know if that's because the GPS the static feed wasn't uploaded in time or there was a problem with it, but this has happened before. So it was disappointing to not have that to rely on because the transit app, I think, is more reliable than the Google Maps or Apple Maps because it has real-time like user tracking. So when old reliable isn't reliable, it's frustrating. Um, and there was also no fare free rollout with the new service changes, which I didn't know about until like the day of, like with previous service changes, like the ones in March, we had two weeks of fare free service, like because of those changes. And then like including Highway 17 free for those two weeks. And then I was surprised that we didn't have that for the new service changes, considering now it's 30 minute frequency on Highway 17, which would be like even more of a reason to have fare free service for that rollout. And it's summer and like families are visiting, tourists are visiting. So hopefully for the fall rollout, we'll have like a fair free service for two weeks. Um, yeah. And then I wanted to thank Ed and the planning team at UCSC for contracting a uh, design for Kim Lingborn to do a temporary um, UCSC transit center design. Um, I think it's really needed to bring back the grade 3D going like a one, having a one seat ride from UCSC to the east side now with the new service changes, we have to transfer downtown to get to UCSC from the east side. So I'm looking forward to that design coming through and thank you for advocating for that. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hey. Good morning. My name's Elizabeth. I live in Saber I work in Watsonville. And well, sometimes I have to go over to the Bay Area for work. Um, but I just really want to commend you all on the service changes. They've been amazing, especially the one, once again, going back, going back on Soquel Avenue and the Highway 17, like Lola said, it just works out so great. Especially yesterday, I was coming back home from Berkeley and everything just lined up amazingly. So that was really good as someone who uses FS at least twice a week. And then just getting the 3D and 3D running back on time has also been wonderful. And I really love just the staggered nature of the bus lines on the east side now because on Broadway you can get the 3A, 3B or 3A, on Soquel you can get the 1, and on Water you can get the 2 or the 90X, so it's all just working wonderful. And I know we talked about this with some of you, but I would just recommend you all to please investigate getting the Clipper app or like something, or like some just like something that would make it easier for folks to tap on. Especially on the Highway 17, there's a lot of confusion. I know a lot of folks who travel from the Bay. There were like a ton of high school students trying to get on the bus yesterday. And they just kept on asking the bus driver, like, hey, can we use a clipper card? So it would just be great to make it a little more seamless for people that are visiting and people that live here. And just like, it takes a long time to board the bus with everyone using cash or either the app. So I recommend just looking into that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments to the board? Hi, welcome. Hello, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Noah Strang. I am the union organizer for SEIU Local 521. The union re represents over 55,000 workers across the state of California and most of the workers here at Metro. Um, I'm coming here today because workers here at Metro, there's a lot of issues. A lot of workers are suffering and they're fed up. And I'm hoping that we can build a better working relationship with management here and address a lot of these issues. Um, I won't get into the details about what's exactly going on, but I wanted to just introduce myself to the board because I've never gone to a board meeting yet and let you know that we are very open to working with management and we want to address these concerns because workers are really suffering and they are what powers Metro. They're the ones who repair the buses. They submit all the financial reports. They're the ones who make this Metro system work. And we want to make sure that we can deliver for the community in a way that is equitable and just for all. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Any further comments? Seeing none, we will go now to labor. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have any online? Oh, there are none. Okay. 
We will go to labor organization communications. Sorry? Okay, one. Yeah. <laughs> any further? None of us want me to respond to any of the public comments. Sir? Uh, so on clipper cards, that's we've tried, but Clipper is unwilling to share their codes with our Fairbox manufacturer. So that's why we don't have Clipper access. And with Willowbrook, we are continuing to try and stand by September as being our target date to be able to move off of there. Um, Willowbrook is unfortunately the only public right of way that we can use that is safe for us to travel our buses. There have been instances of some excessive speed, but we have handled those in operations and made sure that those actions were correct. Thank you. Yes. And who makes the decision about purpose points? That's between Clipper and GFI. GFI is our fare box manufacturer. So it's a third party thing. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on now to item eight additional documentation to support existing agenda items. Nothing? Okay. We are on our consent agenda now. Uh, these will be enacted in one motion unless any member of the board would like to remove an item to be considered later in the agenda or have any comments on any of the items. Yes, Director Pega. Uh, I'd like to pull item 9.17 just for some questions. So we are gonna pull 9.17. We'll take that at the beginning of the regular agenda. And Oh, do you want to do you want to do questions right now? Do you want to pull it or do you just want to get some questions answered? I, I have some questions for John that he could address that. Okay, yeah. If you want to go ahead and do them now, then we can great. keep it as part of consent. Um, this is the item about the uh, zero emission passenger rail and trail project. And I noted that the summary says partner agencies, stakeholders, and community input are being sought now. Uh, I'm aware of the public uh, sessions. But I wondered if there has been engagement with your planning staff, possibly with uh, UCSC and Cabrillo as other stakeholders. Yeah, there have been regular meetings uh, with stakeholders, uh, planning staff from the jurisdictions and the region. Um, so yeah, we've been meeting since January, I want to say, about monthly. My concern is that as as the RTC is doing its studies of uh, alignments. Uh, station locations and such, that there's some attention to the transit connections, the last first mile, the last five first five mile kind mm -hmm. of uh, coordination uh, so that we, we know where the buses are able to get to those stations. Yeah, I reached out uh, to uh, Riley Gebhardt and Sarah Christensen <clears throat> regarding your questions, and they let me know that this summer, July and August is when they're really going to start engaging on the data piece, uh, asking for some of our ridership data as they develop their ridership models. So I think it's more to come. come. The communications are going both ways. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Thanks. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I should have made a comment here on that in front of the board comments. Um, there was a great groundbreaking on the trail. Uh, uh, and yes. there was there was there. Uh, part of the show the uh, it's called, it's called the Legacy Project, and this is for Monterey Bay City Trail from Monterey, Santa Cruz. It was initiated, as I mentioned, by uh, former seven members Congressman Sam Farr, and really, uh, it is really a phenomenal achievement that so many agencies got together to make this become a reality. It's a great event, very well attended by the Wilder Ranch. Um, there's some others that attended, but really, uh, it made you feel good. That's wonderful. Yeah. I guess uh, Director, well, Director Pegler, then Director Robbie. So, uh, I'll just piggyback with that that the uh, uh, State Parks District fellow commented to me wearing a Metro hat that he was very thrilled with the ridership that had occurred on the Big Basin uh, route during a recent arts event. So that was kudos to Metro. I want to share with the group. Director. I have questions about item 911. I guess I'll pull it yeah, just briefly. Okay, you want to pull it for separate discussion outside of just regular yeah, questions? Here? Okay. Sure, but we'll be discussing. Okay, so we will move item uh, 911 to the beginning of our regular agenda after consent. I have a question. I don't need to pull the item. Sure. Um, when does the, what's the timeline for the 9.9? Uh, 
I will turn that to John. Uh, the director did show this. Uh, basically, what we're doing here is entering into two agreements with MIPPEN. One to transfer our refunding that we got from AMBAG to have a funding agreement so that they can begin using that money uh, for pre development costs. And then the second uh, is to enter into an exclusive negotiating agreement with them, which would basically let them pursue the project uh, exclusively for the next 12 months make sure it's financially feasible. Um, at the same time, they'll be doing redevelopment work at the same time. As it, so, so the same time of funding will be also the same time of redevelopment. Yes. Work. Okay. Yeah. So the funding we receive from AMBAG is solely for redevelopment costs. Uh, in order to unlock that funding, we needed this exclusive negotiating agreement and the funding. So, okay. Uh, their midterm is ready to go. Yeah, they always are. Now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, they want to they want to constantly build the pack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, but it's going to take about a year to go through all the pre. Yeah, uh, I think it, we've actually given them nine months of okay. uh, starting July fifteenth. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and part of that is triggered because they're pursuing uh, other funding opportunities that have a timeline, sort of late summer, early fall. So they they kind of want to get things rolling, uh, make sure the project's feasible, apply for that funding, okay. and then yeah. after that nine months, it should be shovel ready. After nine months, we'll have. We'll be able to negotiate the rest of the agreements, as well as okay. development agreements with them. Um, shovel ready would maybe be another nine months after that. Okay. okay. So we're looking close to like a year and a half, two years for breaking ground. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I just keep on getting older, you know, like uh, these <laughs> projects that come up, they come to you when you're I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years and we're breaking ground on projects that I approved like eight years ago. I mean, this so one's moving so crazy. pretty quickly. Yeah, I know mean, that is quick for a project, but yeah. that's what I was saying. Like, I mean, we move so slow. We're like, oh yeah, let's build it, and then ten years later, so we're breaking ground. Yeah. So. Well, we put in them the, the terms of award that we got last year in twenty twenty three of April, and we need to basically complete the project by mid twenty twenty seven. So, okay. Oh, okay. pretty quick. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll also just comment briefly on the groundbreaking that was mentioned. I was hoping to be there, and I guess technically I was, but I showed up an hour early because I had it wrong on my calendar. When I showed up and no one was there, I thought, wow, this is not a heavily attended event, only to find out that I was there an hour early and had to leave before the actual groundbreaking. So I'm sorry to have missed it, but I did see the pictures, and it turns out it was a very <laughs> heavily attended event. And I hear that um, a lot of people came in on bike, and it was um, just a, a, a great groundbreaking. So I'm sorry to have missed it, uh, the actual groundbreaking. Uh, okay, with that, um, we will go to public comment on the consent calendar, consent agenda. Seeing none in the room, do we have any online? Okay, um, yeah. and that's without item 911. Okay, and I uh, want to note that Director Kiros Carter has joined us remotely. Welcome. So we will do a roll call vote. Okay, uh, Director Brown. Aye. Director Downing. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. Director Lynn. Aye. Director McPherson. Aye. Director Newsom. Aye. Director Pagway. Aye. Director Key Rose Carter. Aye. Director Rockin. Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you. So we will return now to item 9.11. Um, you had some questions? Yeah. I, so I have no concern about single source uh, theater. I, I understand why we made that, that decision. I'm not clear exactly why we need a half a million dollar security fee. So I'm going to drive by there during the days the gates are open. Uh, we've been closing the bike, but you know, the last person out, you know, get a lot out of a half a million dollars. We could hire somebody to close the gate every day, a pretty expensive salary, still for cheaply. So, uh, we had problems. I mean, it said, I read the report, it says that you know, we want to protect the federal asset, they pay for the buses and so forth. But have we had problems or required to have automatic gates that? Protect the bus. Well, so that's that's my question. It's a lot of money. You could do a lot with a half a million dollars. Or so so, so, so I mean, I speak on good things. We did, it's, it's a, we have a, it's federal grant, so kind of we 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 do have uh, uh, to use some of the money uh, uh, to protect it, the, our property. It's kind of 
the example, folks on security, which when we get, we get a, a federal triennial audit, um, they look at our properties thoroughly to see how they're protected. And if they see that anybody can walk into a property, just walk in at the, the regular public, that, that could be actually a finding. So, but, but then we're not protecting the, the federal assets. So, so on that case, like, yes, we need to protect the, the buses, our fueling station. Um, so you, you just can't allow somebody from the public to be able to walk on, onto property. Right now, anybody can walk onto property. So, so that's one of the reasons we need to secure our properties. And we do have uh, an application, you know, um, since if you're aware, we have the, our homeless encampment here. We do have a lot of people walking in, and we have had instances that we've gotten uh, items stolen from a, usually, it's been a while, but we've gotten like a bike stolen once, one time, and, and other situations where we have to uh, um, hush people out because they sometimes want to start camp camping on our location also. So it's multiple things. Um, and, and in regards to um, the price of it, why it's, I mean, it's so expensive. Uh, we, we, we went out for bid price. Um, oh, I mean, I, 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 that was quite persuasive in our yeah. just, I just wonder whether you really do this or whether you do this. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it is, it's security, security, and, and especially we're going hydrogen now. Uh, we're going to hydrogen, and we and, uh, and we have the, our LNG station. We do have we had people walk into our LNG station, and and, and we don't have you know constantly somebody there sitting security there. We do have cameras, but uh, you know somebody can just walk in, and we need, definitely need to do a better job of securing our properties. Any other questions? No, I appreciate appreciate um, questions and the responses. Okay. I mean, and if you have any questions about the project, I can, I can explain to you more. Also, why? I mean, it's not just the gates; it's also the equipment that's going to go on. You know, probably the equipment that's going to go onto the ground, and then after that, the, the project actually starts opening up to it. Also, doing other other properties that we have to also secure. So, so this would be the first step to securing all our properties. So that way we use the same equipment on that's going to on the vehicles to to open the other uh, all our other gates. Um, does this kind of thing affect insurance? Uh, I'm pretty sure it would. It, it, it would be it definitely had an, had an accident or something happened here that they would definitely look at our properties that um, you know why are we doing this uh, a better job of securing our our assets. Okay. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Do we have any public comment on this item that was pulled? Seeing none. Do we have any online? Seeing none. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Director Brown? Aye. Director Downing? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Direct Director Koenig? Aye. Director Lynn? Aye. Director McPherson? Aye. Director Newsom? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Key Rose Carter? Aye. And Director Rackham? Aye. And the motion passes. All right, thank you. Thank you. We'll go now. Yeah, we'll go now to our regular agenda item 10. We have presentation of employee longevity awards. We have three, all are 25 years. We have Francisco Calderon, Andre Hart, and Lynn Hersey, all bus operators for the last 25 years here at Metro. Are any of them joining us today? Doesn't look like it, but that is quite an accomplishment. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Right. Um, we don't need to vote on that, right? Okay. But the next one, uh, retiree resolution of appreciation for Sandra Galindo, customer service representative and Andre Hart bus operator. Are either with us today? Okay. Well, once again, let's give them a round of applause. Okay, we have a motion. Do you have okay. a second? Did I hear a second? second. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any public comment on this item? Seeing none in the room, none online. Okay, we'll have our roll call vote, please. Director Brown? Aye. Director Downing? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Director Conan? Aye. Director Lynn? Aye. 
Director McPherson? Aye. Director Newsom? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Key Rose Carter? Aye. Director Rackett? Aye. Motion. Thank you. We'll go now to item 12, Metro Advisory Committee semi annual oral update. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, welcome. New dog, she hasn't learned the word. Podium. <laughs> podium. Podium. What girl. Oh, Thank you, Metro Board, for assisting in dog training. <laughs> Good morning, CEO Aldridge, Board Chair Brown, members of the board, members of the public. I'm Veronica Elsey. I am serving as the chair of your Metro Advisory Committee for 2024. Done this a few times in the past, and it's an honor to come to you and present our semi-annual report to all of you, even though you see our minutes. There's things that I would really like me to hear about our committee. First of all, as I said, I'm chair. Joey Martinez is our vice chair. Current members, James Von Gendy, James Cruz, Michael Pizzano, Jessica DeWitt, and Becky Taylor. And I want to say that the attendance has been absolutely phenomenally good. Um, for several years now, we've had a committee made up of active participants. We actually look at our packets, even the budget. Yes, we did. And we look at the packets. We actively participate in discussions. We have members who do homework in between all kinds of, even our oral communications. You know, people come in and report, you know, collections of broken bus stop signs, ask about can we get a bus that goes over to the Dignity Health Physical Therapy and then staff comes back and we get the answer. No, there's already a stop, close enough. But people do respond to what other writers tell us. These are bus writers. This is a very serious committee and people really take their position seriously. We're happy to do what we're doing. Um, at our, this report covers our February 21st and April 17th meetings. In February, we were introduced to Michael Boyce, and we had a great discussion about the name change to customer experience and what that gives us in terms of a more proactive thing. So that'll be fun to watch. We were also introduced to Jesse Leva, who has been participating in our meetings and I think is going to be a great asset to Metro. So um, good job. And in our February meeting, we did ask about the search for the new CEO and didn't get a lot of answers at the time, but we did subsequently learn that the board had hired the same search firm and they did seek input. So thank you very much for that decision um, board because I, I think you're doing a great job there. Uh, we had a little brief ceremony in February where we said bye-bye to the ticket vending machines as part of a presentation. And uh, we kind of didn't have one there christened, but <laughs> um, we did kind of talk about it. Things that we regularly discuss and get updates on we do still talk a lot about bus stops, everything from places where people ask about rider visibility when they're waiting at stops and extra stops to be put in. We're having discussions about some possible braille signage and where that could go. I really appreciate that. It's kind of um, ongoing. We also receive regular updates on the reimagine Metro project and John is doing a great job of keeping us up to date on all of the potential service changes and what could come down in the future. And we ask him all kinds of questions, just ask him, <laughs> um, um, so that we really understand and can kind of help people um, 
navigate this changing uh, landscape. We also, particularly at our February meeting, spent some time really discussing the new Riverfront Transit Center <clears throat> and some of the challenges that riders are facing. We've heard a lot of complaints from people who are saying, you know, gosh, the distance is awfully great from one bus stop to another. And if you get let off and you're at what will become stop four and you have to go all the way around to one, do you have time to do that and catch your next bus? So it is a good thing that the frequency on some of the buses is increasing. Um, and that we really appreciate Metro's response to how challenging lane two was trying to get off of the 35 with everyone there with their bikes and, and skateboards and whatnot, trying to get on the 17. So we really appreciated the Metro's response to that. We wanted to publicly thank Chuck Farmer for an excellent budget update. We did have a lively discussion. People really didn't look at those tables and we really felt like we were kept up to date on what the board was doing. So we really appreciated that. We also learned in April of the hiring of Corey Aldridge. And so uh, Metro sent two written correspondences and I would like to use this opportunity to publicly state first, welcome Corey Aldridge from your Metro Advisory Committee. And as we said in our written correspondence, we cordially invite you to attend our August 21st meeting and introduce yourself to us. We also wrote a thank you letter to interim CEO, Daniel Zaragoza. And Daniel, he is gold for Metro. He has just jumped in and stepped in and met with people and has just been such an asset to this transit system. And so we really thought that he deserved a thank you note from the Metro Advisory. And frankly, I think he deserved a round of applause from him. <laughs> At our last meeting, we did start asking some questions about the design of the Pacific Station because we hadn't heard anything. We were really concerned that things were going to get so far along, and this is one of the challenges of having a group that only meets quarterly now, um, that by the time we learned what was done, particularly in terms of accessibility and navigation and how you find your buses and where you're going and what people are thinking, uh, that by the time we learned about it, it would be too late to actually respond to any of our suggestions. So at our April meeting, we did want to call a special May 15th meeting to just talk about what the plans are for the Pacific Station and what's going on. Um, one of the things that I would like to suggest is that we kind of figure out an easier line of communication. We went through staff and we were told there was no, nothing was really going on. And so there was no need for it, although it was kind of unofficial. And since this was, um, you know, your advisory committee asking for a special meeting, which is allowed for in the bylaws that it would be good if we could just figure out how we are exactly going to handle those requests in the future. And so we are hoping that we can get a good presentation at our August 21st meeting and then future things, kind of like we did um, a decade ago when Claire came to our advisory committee and she really had the design and explained it and there were models we could look at so that we really understood so that we could give good feedback. And in closing, what I really want to emphasize to you as board members is the middle word in our title, and that is advisory. Uh, we're not advocacy, obviously. We don't make policy, but we are a resource for you. And we are people that are out on the buses that make contact with other people and have a lot of experience 
we really can help you do your jobs better and make this a better system. Please, please, we are not just a group of privileged people who meet quarterly and get all kinds of inside info. I don't really we know that. Um, that is fun. <laughs> but, but that we really want to be there to send advice to you so that you have more information. And I just urge you to keep that in mind and make use of your committee. That's why we're here. So thank you. And I will be happy to take any questions or comments from board members. Thank you, Veronica. Um, we, we appreciate your work on the committee. And as you mentioned, you're a valuable resource uh, to the board. And we are grateful for your, your time and your attention to Metro, you and all of the committee members. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. What's your puppy's name? Lacey. 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 And she's a brand new girl. So she's doing all kinds of all kinds of firsts. <laughs> 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 Are there any public comments on this item? None. All right, uh, we will bring it back and we will move on now to item 13, our public hearing. Final adoption of Santa Cruz Metro's fiscal year 25 and 26 budget. And I will turn it over to Jack. Oh, Good morning. Good. <laughs> All right, welcome. Here to close out the public comment period, so we're going to present the budget for FY25. I am not going to go into the level of details that I've gone in at prior board meetings. I'm just going to focus on a couple of the changes that we've made, and hopefully at that point uh, we can put this approved and move forward. To focus on. So. Our FY24 budget surplus base. You remember before I talked about base, and then I talked about phase one, phase two, and current affairs. We're at about 7.5 million. Our new budget right now is going to be for FY25, 5.3 million dollars as a positive. The adjustments we made, we actually missed um, uh, business systems. Program administrator. That's it. I think that's the name. <laughs> so we actually put it in the headcount. We just didn't put the dollars. So we added that in. We also updated our final insurance policy numbers that came in for CalTIP, as well as some TDA updates. So roughly it brought it down a little bit lower than what I had presented before back a couple of months ago. So ultimately, we're at 5.3. All right, walk down chart. Before it was about 51.7, we're going to 51.9 operating loss. It was roughly flat last time. So we're really kind of flat together, 24 to 25. Moving on for PL, as you can see, we're flat uh, going one year to the next, about 200,000 off. And like I said, I'm going to try to focus on things that have changed, not going through each slide. No changes here. This is the same as before. No changes here other than the slight difference that I talked about that we made changes. And if anybody wants, wants to talk about it, stop me. Just kind of go through quick slides. And then our FY25 phase one, phase two, and our free fair time period that's for 12 months starting in September, rolling through August of next year. So 10 months and 25, two months and 26. Ultimately, that moves our bottom line number from 5.4 down to 3. Point. So nice delay here. The cost associated right now with the phase one, phase two, mm -hmm. bottom line is about $3.5 million. In order to do that through the plan of FY26, so that would actually be June of 2026. We decided to go free 
go with a ballot measure at the end of the year, we would need to extend this another six months. And then our zero fares at this point right now, it looks like it's going to be about $4.5 million to cover the 12 months. The good thing is we have TERSA funding right now and LC top grant that is that came in and now will help offset. And then ultimately, of that money, we put money aside. So you see those positive numbers. The positive numbers, we're just contributing that money to either go to capital projects or they're going into set aside buckets that we put in. So the first one is our capital replace our capital bus replacement fund. And I'm gonna go through the buckets because I haven't shown that yet. So that's money set aside so we can match funding to buy buses. Our CalPORS UAL liability, again, that's another bucket for putting money aside. Our grant matching capital operating reserves. That's four million. That's so that we can replace air conditioners, buy cars, do stuff that we cannot get grants for, um, or for that matter, even match grants that are non-bus. So that could be hydrogen facility. You know, we're doing that, and then reserve replenishments. So that's the juggernaut where we spend more, we put more money on our reserves, and vice versa. And I'll walk through those a little bit in this presentation here shortly. And that's our final budget uh, I, for 25 and 26. This is just a function of math that as our 25 kind of drops a little bit, like I said, we're missing that one position. 26 dropped down to, but nothing has changed in 26 since last person. I'm just going to skip through this unless somebody has a question. Opportunity and risks have not changed. And now our reserve balances, which I have not walked through. So the top reserve, let's focus on the top buckets for right now. Um, the workers' compensation fund, that's a mandate. We have to put that in. So that's 2.5 million that's fully funded now. Our liability insurance reserve fund, that's 0.7. Again, that's a mandate that we have to put in. So we're putting that money aside. Uh, the Operations Sustainability Reserve Fund says so three months of operating costs put aside. So for some reason or another, we get no money, but we want to continue operations. We could continue to pay everybody, pay our bills, pay our lights. That is the three months. Again, that goes, we spend more money, that bucket goes up. If we spend less money, that bucket goes down. It's all about three months. And the last three is our cash flow reserve fund. That's three million. That's the ebbs and flows between cash going out the door versus actually getting cash in. So, like anything, you pay your bills during your between your paychecks. That's money going out of your checking account. Then your paycheck comes in. And comes in. This helps kind of bridge that gap. Sure. You know, the last two buckets. Um, is there a reason that you couldn't use the operations sustainability reserve fund? Cash flow since not money you're actually you're going to get that money back. It's just temporary borrowing from the back because you have a cash flow issue. So you really need two separate buckets for those two functions. It, so the three million is just ebbs and flows. That's just the bank account fluctuates. Oh, but the nineteen point six, yes, that's money that the board agreed. Let's put this money aside for three months. This took. Place, I think you like my question is why you couldn't use the 19 covering the three million dollar cash in the fund because they're independent, distinct buckets. Technically, you, we could put them together and just say, Hey, let's just make one bucket and call it Operation Sustainability Reserve Fund and use it as our cash flow mechanism for the three million. We could do that. I think it was more for visibility why we put it out as two different buckets three million for use up and down. And the 19.6 million as staying static based off of this is the money set aside. I guess my question is whether we had cash flow problems that couldn't come out of the 19.6 million yeah. sitting there and you have a cash flow problem. Could you borrow from that 19, not make it 19 plus three, but just make it 19? Why, why would you not be able to? I mean, I, yeah, we I, could. I understand it gives you more. More protection in general, but yeah, you know, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, 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 it's idle kind of 
big interest. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's about 19.6 plus three and then we're trying to build it up. I think it's more around the visibility and saying the 19.6 is really a function of three months of our spend, period. We could definitely use that for cash flow and eliminate, I mean, eliminate three million and say this is operation state sustainability reserve fund plus cash flow reserve fund, you know, one bucket. And it'll just be a function of three months and just use it at 19.6. We could. I mean, definitely. I mean, like I said, these buckets were created before I came here. I think it was just more for visibility. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is, is one of those just sort of the cash flow? It's just, it's like your checking account. You're just keeping up money in there. And the other one is yeah, like a savings in case of, of, as you mentioned, if if the cash just stopped. The other, the, the other three million is just sort of, Sitting there to make sure when bills come in. Yes, yeah, your ebbs and flows. Yeah, that's that's your uh, ebbs and flows is your three million. The nineteen point six is if the spigot stops and we don't get cash. Is there a, an accounting function that happens between these two, or do you see them? We actually put the money in reserve on our balance. Okay. Um, yeah. So the bottom buckets are there's no minimum balance. So the first was the bus reserve fund. So this is the mandate where we put $3 million aside to help buy buses in the future. It's our matching portion. So when we get cash, we put the 3 million and then use that 3 million, so forth. So right now we're at 8 million, but we're gonna be using that as part of the hydrogen buses and buses going forward. Operating capital reserve fund. So this is our 14.3. This is really our bucket that we can pull from, pull from from to basically fund certain initiatives above and beyond what's in the budget on our operating side, if we agree, as well as if we need money brought over to our uh, capital side and we need matching funds in order to build something. Or like air conditioning units go out, we use it out. Now I'm going to jump all the way to the end. UAL and OPEP, this is an $8 million bucket. It's going to go to 10 and it stops. And this is 2 million each year that we've set aside up till 10. And this is to pay for our ever growing, um, while a pension is fine, it is underfunded now because of the returns CalPERS have, but it's much cheaper, but it's helped to pay for that. But the real focus right now is around the retirement because that's grown, I mean, great. And again, this is money set aside to help pay for that as we go forward. And the COVID recovery fund, this is the money that we've set aside as we went through COVID. As we came out, we knew that we would be digging a bigger loss than what we expect, and we'd be using that money to help fund our PL as we go forward. So, makes sense. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I just that just explains it. So if you read through, you go through each one. Um, on our capital budget, nothing has changed, but I want to highlight something. Um, on the hydrogen buses on top, 44 and the nine, those numbers are actually less the H50 vouchers. So just to kind of put this in context. I actually wrote it down here. The 71.943 that you see on that kind of the column right there in FY25, if we were to include, and don't get me wrong, our buses, our 40, our 44 hydrogen buses are 1.44, 1.443 million dollars a piece. And this, it's actually discounted $258,000 per bus because we get these vouchers, like a rebate. So effectively, this is net of that. Had we not got these vouchers, that would be $88.2 million instead of 71.9. So we're getting another 16, almost $17 million worth of credit against those buses not showing up here on top of the VW grant and the FTA, all this other fund. You gave us the vouchers? Um, you know, I want to say it's the I don't know if it's the federal or state. Do you know, John? 
Uh, I think it was a state. Think of that as kind of like the hybrid for the buy a battery car, you get seven seven thousand five hundred dollars off. Similar to that, but a much bigger, different type of program. So, so it's, oops. there we go. Our overall portfolio is one hundred and fifteen. That number really would be 131.6 in spending. But because we are discounted, since we don't actually get the vouchers, the vouchers actually go to the manufacturer and then it comes off the price, then uh, we pay the net. So it's 115.3. Nothing has changed on here since last time I presented. And this. I, how the funding is, like I said, does not include age fit, but the funding hasn't changed since then. And that's it. Outside of that, that is pretty much the budget. No other changes. Very simple. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. When we negotiated the hydrogen bus purchase, <clears throat> however, it's funded, was there any provision for delay of delivery, like a discount or any kind of? There's no, no. There's not, and they would not put it in there either. We talked about it. We talked about incentives to deliver early, but that's about it. Any questions from the board? All right, thank you so much. We sure. will uh, open up the public hearing. If there are any public comments on this item. Seeing none in the room, do we have any online? Okay, we will bring it back to the board for final adoption. Yes. The approval of the budget. I can post my staff. Okay. All right, we have a motion to second. Did you get the who's the second? I second. I think they both did. Okay. Koenig and Lynn seconded. I think. <laughs> I think I heard Koenig first. Okay. Um, yes. Just a, a question. I thought the discussion last time, the minutes seemed to reflect it, was that there were going to be options coming back to the board at this meeting. And if, if they were implied in there, I think maybe could we just speak to that? Yeah, so we talked pretty in depth that they spent a lot of time in the committee meeting about this. Um, from that kind of discussion, I think there's some further discussion that needs to be had that I think we're going to talk in August about it and then we'll bring it back probably in at the August board meeting to we'll talk more about path and directions which way we go and so forth. Okay. All right. Uh we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote please? Director Brown. Aye. Director Downey. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. Director Lynn. Aye. Director McPherson. Aye. Aye. Director Newsom? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director P. Rose Carter? Aye. And Director Rapkin? Aye. Two passes. Great, thank you. <clears throat> we'll go now to item 14, considering a resolution calling a public hearing on Friday, August 23rd, 2024, during the 9 a.m. regular Metro board meeting at the admin offices here at 110 Vernon Street regarding the zero fare programs. We'll turn it to John. Morning. Morning. Uh, so this item is just calling the hearing to get comments at the next meeting and potentially adopt a, a zero fare program. Um, there's no proposal that we're giving before you today. There's one in the budget packet uh, that was just presented, which I believe was for two years. Is that one, one year? One year. Um, so I think we're still uh, working out the timing. If it's uh, going to start in September of this year, I think we should delay for next year. But basically, because it's a change to our fair policy, we need to open up the public comment uh, period. To and to an atmosphere. Director Rotkin. Um, when this came up at our last meeting, the issue was raised very briefly. I think Ed Ray said that I spoke to it at least. The, the question of UCS students with the free fair program, we're not anticipating just, you know, stop building the university for the equivalent of fair, or they're not equivalent. And, um, and the answer was, in terms of why would they keep paying when everybody else gets a free ride? Uh, at least the, it was a fair this free ride. 
um, was that they get a level of frequency that's not enjoyed by others in the system. And I think that's a good partial answer to the question. But in terms of transparency, UCSC is not in session at all. There's, there's very few students even around here. We should find some mechanism to see that they're at least representative of that community. I mean, as a student government body, even the student assembly, they have a, even had a transportation committee. I'm not sure about that. But in, in some, at least they should be able to be present, raise any concerns they have about this, because otherwise they're going to come back. We're going to decide what we decide in August. And, the whole thing out, I'll come back and it's been made, and they, you know, there's no transparency at all for them. They're, they're back in the cities during the summer. Yeah. So I, I don't know. We can work with Ed and figure out who the right who proper group to contact is, but the students should have them for that Yeah, that's a great point. And there's there isn't well, speaking a little bit on term, but there's not any particular urgency to hold the hearing in August if there is a desire to change it to September or October. Uh, you know, we need to hold, we've done the free fair periods in the past. So if we did want to launch a free fair period temporary with the service change in September, we could do that, come back and hold a hearing for a longer term zero fair program. I, I don't, I think that would be fine because uh, we've done these free fair zero fair periods in the past on the contract for transit services. Yeah, we have a contract for transit service with UCSC. It's around $5 million per year. It funds the additional service that we provide to the campus. It's funding that service. If there's a reduction in that, it's a dollar for dollar reduction in the service that we provide to the campus. So that, that's kind of right. that. Right. There. Yeah. yeah, but it's a great point that if we're considering this change, we should do it at a time. And I don't think we should get started early on this very difficult question talking about it. The idea that we could then, before we actually implement it, have another meeting with the students that could actually be you know, present and it's a larger number that they're concerned about. It. Yeah, well, I think I'm we can try to stir up. Process here because I think we, we need to have their payment as part of the system. We can't make this work yeah. without it. That's not the argument here, but it's they need to know what's going on about it so we can go inside. Yeah, well, we could entertain a suggestion to not to postpone the hearing. Um, still open it in August, but maybe not make a final decision until September, not call the action until September. Uh, call the question. I think there's flexibility. Yeah. Thanks for the comment. All right, any further questions from the board? Okay, uh, seeing that we will open public comment on this item. We don't see this resolution. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's just on the resolution, not just the public comment. Okay. Yes. Yeah, actually, to make a point for that, I'm representing the students. I'm going to be one of the uh, vice presidents for our student union assembly at UCSC. And so I'm going to be vice president of student life, basically the fares for buses and all that. And so um, if you guys are down, I would be really open to having that like communication between the school and between uh, you guys as the Metro board. And um, yeah, my name's uh, last by the way. Uh, so it's great to hear, hear that coming from you guys and wanting to hear that like student input. And um, yeah, I guess. That's what I wanted to say so far. If we can have further discussions, that would be great. We thought you should definitely meet John Herder when we talk. Yeah. And what was your name again, please? Uh, Nicolas Robles. Yes. Thank you, yes. Thank you. Uh, Hi. Uh, I guess I'll also add that we have an advisory committee for TAPS, um, ACCTP. Um, and maybe they could also have better communication with Metro, like John could do a presentation and like have a public hearing there as well to get, um, or just have better communication with them. But I agree there should be like, just across the board, like better communication with students in Metro and like maybe get another advisory committee if like dedicated to that, I don't know. But um, especially because we don't have direct representation on the board, it's really important. Thank you. I also want to add that both Bruce and Mary raised this question as well, if that's just my concern. Okay. Thank you. Any further comments? And my last comment being the uh, half answer by other half the answer to you, Mike, is remember that all students use all local services, not just the university, and they're not charged for them. So while the service contract pays for the additional service, 
they have access to all route ones, twos, 35s, everything local. It's not the highway 17 at no additional cost to them. So they also get a bus pass for local service as part of the service contract. So even though in the summer they may not be here, they're still using the rest of our system. They're still doing that, which is what they've already paid for. That's like their bus pass. So there's no additional fare to them. But if we go to fare free, they're still having access to all of the service. Maybe if it's not as equitable, we can look at something like the 17 having that pass work too, but they don't only get restricted to the university service for what they pay for. They get the entire system. So there's a lot of value in that as well. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay, thank you. Seeing none in the room, do we have any online? Okay, we'll bring it back to the board. And we are considering approval of a resolution calling a public hearing on Friday, August 23rd. Right, okay, we have a motion from Director Rotkin, a second from Director Koenig. Um, roll call vote, please. Uh, Director Brown. Aye. Director Down. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. Director Lynn. Aye. Director McPherson. Aye. Director Newsom. Aye. Director Pegler. Aye. Director T. Rose Carter. Aye. And Director Rotkin. Aye. And the motion passes. Great, thank you. We'll go now to our CEO oral report. I'll turn it over to Corey. Yeah. So on May 9th, uh, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District had a, a newcomer family event where Metro was able to speak with five materials on riding the bus. Uh, Eduardo Dubriesca, the transit supervisor, and Lorena Calderon, bus operator, participated in that event. Uh, we also had uh, leadership Santa Cruz County at uh, a class of 37 that graduated. And from that, we had a few from Metro. Uh, Rena Solorio, our assistant operations manager, uh, was in the graduating class, as was Chris Sullivan, a paratransit supervisor, and Luis Abundes, uh, custodial supervisor. On June 14th, the California Transportation Foundation announced that the one right in the campaign that was named the Public Outreach Program of the Year, uh, which is a uh, outstanding group. That, uh, thank you, Daniel. Where's Daniel? There she is. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, also, on uh, June 15th, Metro provided free fares on uh, Route 35 to the Big Basin State Park. The Big Basin Park about events, uh, utilizing one ride at a time uh, wrapped to buses. And Metro also set up a booth to educate the public uh, on one ride at a time and youth cruise free. On June 20th, last week, the new summer service started. So we see that we put new uh, summer headway schedules uh, on the stands, new brochures uh, are available. <coughs> and We've moved our Highway 17 service uh, pickup location was what's well, going to be area four. You, you know the areas. It's been moved around uh, because the crowd uh, that congregates for that bus, it gets quite long. So I've been at the end of that a number of times. And uh, so it's at a better location. Last weekend, the Metro had a booth down at the Kids Day in downtown Santa Cruz, loaded youth cruise free, one ride at a time, and the summer service changes as part of Reimagine Metro. Also, uh, Metro partnered again with Vibes Magazine uh, on their summer issue, and a copy is included in each of the uh, board members' packed information. And our latest training class of 21 uh, passed their DMV testing the first time, uh, and will be in line uh, to uh, be in service in the next 10 days. So we got a class of 21. Do we keep every one of them? Or are we? Yes. So it's, it's, usually we you yeah. plan on losing 30 to 50%. It's my my experience at uh, training class. We kept pretty much every single one of this class and all of them passed for the first time. So uh, tremendous job by their their training um, instructor. Did a great job getting them through. Um, Metro is holding its first Transit Safety Institute training class, uh, which is a national uh, training class offering 
staff and supervisors. So to bring staff and supervisors from from Metro, from uh, Monterey Salinas Transit, Sam Trans, and other transit systems across the country. Uh, kind of nice. We just actually in my my old agency in Missoula a few years ago also held a national training. We sent a few Metro people to Missoula. So kind of nice. So. Uh, Metro uh, was going to go live with our new our workday uh, ERP system. Uh, we had implemented the uh, HX uh, accounting system, and now we're going to be uh, adding in the financial financial and procurement uh, modules are going to go live. So it's the next last biggest piece of, of this uh, implementation process. So everything is done. As smoothly as I've ever heard for an ERP system being installed, which is awesome. And Metro is going to participate in both the Scotts Valley and Watsonville parades uh, on the 4th of July to help celebrate the holiday with them. One last, we had uh, a retirement um, from Eddie Benson, who is our uh, fleet uh, facilities manager. He is retired and will have. At the next board meeting, we'll have a longer bio for us to read, but I just wanted to point out that he's uh, been with us for like seven years. And, uh, you know, he was instrumental in helping get our fleet modernized, uh, building relationships with the vendors. Um, you know, we wish him best in his retirement. And with that, uh, I have uh, promoted uh, Freddie. But it's probably oh, Freddie. Yeah. Freddie Rocha has now been uh, promoted to deputy director over uh, fleet facilities, effective uh, this week. Freddie uh, started with us in 2004, uh, been with us for 20 years. He started as a mechanic, uh, he, he advanced to a lead, a supervisor, a superintendent. Assistant maintenance manager, most recently the facilities maintenance manager. So he's been really instrumental in uh, working well with in our unions and with uh, our staff, and really uh, bringing out the best in in uh, everyone that he works with. So we're excited to have him uh, in this role. Congrats, Freddie. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I want to thank Metro too. Last year. Um, we announced to have some bus put um, at the end of at each end of the parade for safety reasons. Uh, one of uh, the authors mentioned you know, death traffic. So and anyway, Metro provided that and is doing that again this year. And nice way to show off our wrap buses and really provide the safety feature for a parade. Thank you. Yeah, that would be good help. Um, first of all, thank you for putting buses in our fourth floor parades in mm -hmm. our county. Uh, who's in charge of that so I could reach out to you in regard to the Watsonville? Um, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see each other afterwards. I can talk to you about that. Um, are we going to be getting one of the nice new buses? <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. And it would also be nice to see other, um, you know, directors come down to Watsonville too. I know you'll have Scotts Valley, but like, you know, maybe the chair can come and be, you know, march in the parade with it. I know it's always a fun time. So, yeah. Come to Watsonville. <laughs> So one time we were able to have the Watsonville Treaty Band participate because our parade was at three. Oh, no, we did it the day before on the third because oh, you don't do it on the fourth. We do. Last year we had fireworks at the last minute, so we had to do it on the third, <coughs> and it was wonderful. But otherwise, we don't get to have the parade because our timing of our parades are too soon, too close. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I know Apple has a parade as well. So yeah. Sure. Everybody's it's good that everybody's what, you, what time is your parade start? Um, I, I believe it starts around 12 or 1 o'clock in there. So, and I think it goes on, it's a long parade, it's like three hours. So, it's a lot of horses. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you. Any public comment on this item? Seeing none, any online? No. All right. Uh, that will bring us to item 16, a review of the item to be discussed in our closed session. The board will be meeting in closed session. Conference of Legal Counsel existing litigation is subscribed in the agenda. The board will then open open session, report out as necessary, and then now uh, it's time for a public comment session. Are there any public comments on our closed session item? 
Any online? Seeing none, we will uh, take a short break for anyone that needs to collect themselves. We'll take a quick bio break and we will um, return to our closed session, after which we will reconvene to open session. Sorry. This one's All right. There we go. We are uh, reconvening to open session and we will go to uh, report out on our closed session. The board met closed session as described in the agenda and there's no reportable action. Thank you. Uh, with that, we will adjourn to our next meeting on Friday, August 23rd at 9 a.m. here at the Metro offices. Until then, uh, enjoy your July summer break and we'll see you in August. Take care. Thank you, yeah. For everybody leaves, uh, there was something that was left out the agenda that we're going to need for the Watsonville uh, development. And so we're going to need to have a special meeting. Oh. So just be prepared. It's one quick item. Some of them didn't make it on the agenda. And they okay. need to come out. They can't wait till August. Okay. So uh, maybe in the next week or two. Oh, okay. So soon, Champa. All right. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.